today's video, we're going to talk about something that you've probably heard before, pH, uh, but you may not know what it means. You probably think it has something to do with acids, but not many people are clear about what pH really means. There's also something called pOH that you'll learn about uh, today as well. We're first going to set the stage for understanding pH by talking about water and how it behaves as an acid and a base. And at some point here, we're going to have to do some calculations because pH is a fairly numerical idea. Well, in water, or actually in any aqueous solution, the water is functioning as an acid and it's functioning as a base. It's decomposing reversibly to form H pluses, which makes it a weak acid, and OH minuses, which makes it a weak base. Now, in reality, what's actually happening is two H2Os are decomposing reversibly to give you hydronium ion, H3O plus, and OH minus. But the model that is convenient to use, that I'm going to use most of the time, is just this H plus plus OH minus. Now, this reaches dynamic equilibrium, and so, like all dynamic equilibria, there is a K value associated with the concentrations of the H plus and the OH minus. It has a special name because it's fairly important. It's called the ion product constant for water, and the symbol for it is, is Kw. Kw is the product of the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus, and it's equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. Now remember, the H2O is decomposing reversibly to give you H plus and OH minus, and this is nothing more than just an ordinary Kc expression except the reactant H2O does not show up in the expression because it's a liquid whereas these other two species are aqueous. So KW is really just the KC for this dissociation. Now 1 times 10 to the minus 14th is a really small number and so that very little exponent is telling you that this doesn't happen to a very great extent in water. Another thing to notice is that for pure water when this dissociates because of the one-to-one -one stoichiometry, the concentration of H plus and the concentration of OH minus at equilibrium should be the same thing because every mole of H plus is only formed when an OH minus mole is also formed. So the concentration of H plus in pure water is going to be 1.00 times 10 to the minus 7th, and that will also be the concentration of OH minus in pure water. Multiply those two together, and you get 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. Now, in an acidic solution, the H plus concentration has to be higher than it normally would be, which in pure water would be 1 times 10 to the minus 7th. So the H plus concentration is bigger than that in an acidic solution. Now, because Kw is a constant, and it's composed of H plus concentration times OH minus concentration, if this number gets larger, the only way we can keep this constant is if this number gets smaller. So in an acidic solution, it's also true that the OH minus concentration would have to be less than 1 times 10 to the minus 7th. By the same token, in a basic solution, your concentration of OH minus is going to be higher than 1 times 10 to the minus 7th. So that means the concentration of H plus in a basic solution is going to be smaller than 1 times 10 to the minus 7th. In any aqueous solution, we have seen that Kw is equal to the concentration of OH minus times the concentration of H plus. So that means that if I wanted to find the concentration of H plus in any aqueous solution, it would be equal to Kw divided by the concentration of OH minus. So that's a way that we can calculate H plus. Also, we could solve this equation for OH minus and find that Kw divided by concentration of H plus is the OH minus concentration. Like in this problem, in seawater, OH minus concentration is 5 times 10 to the minus 9th molar. What's the H plus concentration? Well, the concentration of H plus is always going to be Kw divided by whatever is the concentration of OH minus. So Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. OH minus concentration in seawater is 5 times 10 to the minus 9th molar. And so when we do our arithmetic, we find that 2 times 10 to the negative 6th is the concentration of H plus. Minus 6 as an exponent is smaller in a negative sense than minus 7. So that means you have only six zeros in front of the 2 rather than 7 that you would have in pure water. And so this is an acidic solution, seawater is. We're going to do a little math refresher here. 
most of you probably remember this, but maybe don't work with it on a regular basis, and we're going to need to know this for pH. The base 10 logarithm of a number is the number to which you have to raise 10 to get that number. So the log of 10 to the 6th would be 6. And we're going to use this idea as we explore pH. pH is really a measure of acidity, and it uses a logarithmic scale. So it's not a linear scale. pH 6 and pH 8 and pH 10 are different distances from each other between the 6 and the 8 and the 8 and the 10. That's one of the consequences of a logarithmic scale. Well, here's how pH is defined. pH is the negative base 10 logarithm of H plus concentration. Well, if pH is the negative logarithm of H plus concentration, then in pure water, where the concentration of H plus is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th, the pH would be equal to negative base 10 log of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th. Well, the log of 10 to the negative 7th is negative 7. The opposite of that is 7. We would record this as 7.00. Here's a little significant figures uh, tip. When you take the log of a number, the number of significant figures, in this case we have two significant figures in 1.0, that's the number of decimal places in the log. So 1.0 is recorded as 7.00. By the same token, if we were to take the anti-log of this, which would be 10 to the 7.00, the number of decimal places, here two decimal places, would be the number of significant figures in the answer. So we would record this 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th. So that's how we deal with significant figures when we're taking base 10 logs, and natural logs for that matter. It's the same rule. Now, in an acidic solution, we know that the concentration of H plus is going to be greater than 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th. So let's pick a number that's bigger than that, just at random. Uh, let's say we had concentration of H plus equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 5th, which is 100 times bigger. What's the pH? Well, the pH is the negative base 10 logarithm of 1 times 10 to the minus 5, which is just 5. And if we had a basic solution, we know that the concentration of H plus would be less than 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7th. So again, we'll just pick a random number. Let's say for a random basic solution, H plus was 1.0 times 10 to the minus 9th, which is 100 times smaller than in water. pH, of course, would be 9. So the pH scale sort of looks like this. Here's neutral right here in the middle, 7.00 is neutral. And if we go higher than that, we have base. And if we go lower than 7, we have a solution that's acidic. So here's an example problem. If the pH is 6.24 for a solution, find the H plus concentration of the solution. Well, it's easy to go the other way because we have that definition right now. pH is equal to the negative base 10 logarithm of H plus concentration. But here, we are given pH, and we're supposed to find H plus concentration. Well, let's just solve it. First thing we want to do is divide both sides by 1. So minus pH is equal to the base 10 log of the H plus concentration. Now, to undo a logarithm, you take 10 to that logarithm. So we want to do that on right-hand side, 10 to the log H plus, but to make it an equation, we also have to take the left side and raise 10 to it. So 10 to the minus pH, in this case 10 to the minus 6.24, is going to be equal to H plus concentration. So in general, we can say H plus concentration is equal to 10 to the minus pH. Now let's solve it for this problem. If you take 10 and raise it to the minus 6.24, you get 5.8 times 10 to the minus 7th. Now remember that significant figure rule. In the anti-log here, I have two decimal places, so that means I'm going to have two significant figures in the anti-log. pOH is a measurement of basicity that also uses a logarithmic scale, and it's defined just the same way as pH is. POH is the opposite of the base 10 logarithm of OH minus concentration.
Now, there's a relationship between pH and pOH in any given solution, and it comes from this. We know from the value of and the expression for Ka that H plus concentration times OH minus concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. If we took the negative log of both sides of this equation, on the right-hand side, we would get minus log of 10 to the minus 14th is just 14. On the left-hand side, we'd have minus the log of H plus concentration plus minus the log of OH minus concentration because of our identities for logarithms. This should be 14.00 with two decimal places. Forgot that. But minus log of H plus concentration is pH, and minus log of OH minus concentration is pOH. So here's the relationship between pH and pOH. The sum of the pH and the pOH for a solution is equal to 14. So here's an example problem. A lake has an H plus concentration of 3.2 times 10 to the minus 5. We're supposed to find the pH, the pOH, and tell if the lake is acidic or basic. So first, let's tackle the pH, because that's the easiest. pH is equal to negative base 10 logarithm of H plus concentration, which in this case is 3.2 times 10 to the negative fifth. The answer is going to be 4.49, and two decimal places, because I have two sig figs in the number I'm taking the log of. Well, right away, we can tell that this is acidic, because pH is less than 7, and that's what acidic solutions are like. To find the pOH, we could find the OH minus concentration and then take the pOH from that. But since we now know that 14.00 is the sum of pH and pOH, we can just subtract the pH and get the pOH number. And this comes out to 9.51. Now let's talk about how pH applies to various kinds of solutions that have acidic or basic characteristics. If we're talking about strong acids and strong bases, we usually don't use pH for concentrated solutions of strong acids and bases. Remember that 7 is in the middle here. And this is a logarithmic scale, so the difference between 7 and 8 is fairly significant. The difference between 7 and 6 is pretty significant. The difference between 8 and 9, it's a bigger jump. And then the same thing is true for the difference between 6 and 5. Every time you make a jump in pH, you're jumping 10 times bigger. So 10 is going to be like off the chart, and so is 4. It's going to be off of our screen here. When you get to the extremes, when you get out past about 14 on this side, or you get down to 0 or even possibly below 0 on this side, pH ceases to be a real meaningful way to express concentrations of strong acids and bases. So we're usually only going to use pH as a measurement of acidity for fairly dilute solutions of strong acids and bases. So for a dilute solution of a strong acid, HA, so here's HA, generic strong acid, it's going to completely dissociate to give you H pluses and A minuses. The concentration of H plus is going to be equal to whatever the concentration of HA is times the number of protons per molecule. So if it's monoprotic, they're equal to each other. If it's diprotic, the H plus concentration will be double. For example, if you have 0.2 molar H2SO4, H2SO4 splits up to give you two H pluses and SO4 two minus. So a 0.2 molar solution of this is going to give you a H plus concentration that's 0.4 molar. That's the only thing that you really have to keep in mind, and then just take the negative base 10 logarithm of that number, and you'll get pH. And obviously, you can see that even at 0.2 molar, the pH is going to be a pretty low number here. Likewise, for dilute solutions of a strong base, the concentration of the base times the number of hydroxide ions per formula unit is going to be the OH minus concentration. So if you had something like CaOH2, which is going to split up to give you two OH minuses and a calcium with a two plus charge, the concentration of OH minus is just going to be double whatever the concentration of the base was. So here's 0.1 molar NaOH. NaOH splits up 
to give you one Na plus and one hydroxide ion. So 0.1 molar NaOH also gives you 0.1 molar OH minus concentration. Now for weak acids, pH is usually much more useful, and that's where it gets used quite often. Let's look at some things that are categorized as weak acids. One thing is molecular weak acids, molecules that split up reversibly to give you H plus and some anion, in this case B minus. Like for example, HF. HF will dissociate or ionize to give you H plus ions and F minus ions in aqueous solution. Another substance that qualifies as a weak acid is acidic anions. This is sort of rare. There aren't a lot of these things, but these come from the first dissociation or the second dissociation of a polyprotic acid. So you start out with some anion. Notice this has got a negative charge, but the anion contains an H in it. That splits up reversibly to give you another proton and then a more fully deprotonated anion like HSO4, the bisulfate ion, for example. This can split up reversibly, because it's a weak acid, to give you H plus and sulfate ion. There aren't a lot of these things, but you'll recognize them when you see them. Another one would be uh, the bicarbonate ion, HCO3. It's an anion that starts with H, typically, that is an acidic anion. And then there are acidic cations as well. These are usually the conjugate acids of weak bases. Um, so I'm modeling this with the generic BH plus, and that's going to split up to give you a proton and then a molecule. Like, for example, ammonium ion. This is an acidic cation, and it'll dissociate reversibly to give you ammonia and a proton. For weak acids, there's an acid dissociation constant, Ka, because they reach a dynamic equilibrium. And if you think about this, Ka is going to be equal to concentration of H plus times concentration of A minus, because those are the products, raised to their coefficients. And typically, you're going to see these be monoprotic. And so you have ones there, divided by the concentration of the weak acid in solution at equilibrium. So that's the expression for Ka, the acid dissociation constant. And you'll make extensive use of Ka. Here's an example of a weak molecular acid, HF, splitting up to give you H plus ions, aqueous, and F minus ions, aqueous. And the HF itself is dissolved in water, which means the individual particles are separated from each other. So Ka for hydrofluoric acid is H plus concentration times F minus concentration divided by HF concentration. The pH for a weak acid depends on two things. What is the concentration? But it also depends on what's the extent of ionization. How far did it ionize before it reached dynamic equilibrium? Let's look at an example problem here. We've got a 0.1 molar solution of acetic acid, HC2H3O2, and the pH at equilibrium is 2.87. The question is, what is Ka? Well, let's take a look at a rice chart to try and analyze what's going to be happening at equilibrium. So here's our reactant, HC2H3O2, in equilibrium with H pluses and acetate, C2H3O2, 1 minus. Initially, 0 0.100 moles per liter HC2H3O2, but no H plus and no acetate ion. The change could be minus x, plus x, and plus x because the stoichiometry is 1 to 1. So that at equilibrium, I end up with 0 0.100 minus x for acetic acid and x for both protons and acetate ions. Ka is going to be concentration of H plus times concentration of the acetate ion divided by the concentration of H C2, H3, O2. But in terms of our chart, Ka is x squared divided by 0 0.100 minus x. What's x? Well, x is equal to the concentration of H+, plus, but that's equal to 10 to the minus pH, 
or in this case 10 to the minus 2.87. And that's equal to 0 0.0013. So what's Ka? Well, it's 0 0.0013 squared divided by 0 0.100 minus 0 0.0013. And Ka comes out to 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, according to that arithmetic. Weak bases come from a few sources as well. One is molecular bases, like you could have some molecule. I'm going to call it B minus, although it may not have a charge. And it reacts with water. And the water functions as an acid here, donating a proton to the molecular base. And that leaves OH minus from the water. And then you get the conjugate acid of the base, HB. Ammonia is a good example of this. Ammonia will react with water, and it will reach dynamic equilibrium with ammonium, and H4+, plus, that's the conjugate acid of ammonia, and leaving behind OH-. Another substance that's a weak base is the anion that comes from a weak acid. So if you have some weak acid, HA, and it dissociates to give you H+, plus and anion A-, minus, that A- minus itself is a weak base. Well, that weak base, like all weak bases, will react with water and give you OH minuses and the conjugate acid. Like fluoride, this is the conjugate base of HF. This will react with water and give you OH minus and hydrofluoric acid. For bases, which are at equilibrium, there's also a dissociation constant. It's called the base dissociation constant, Kb. This is a reversible reaction. That should be a double-headed arrow. Now, Kb is just the equilibrium expression that you'd expect if you were just using our regular equilibrium rules. So concentration of Hb, the conjugate acid, times concentration of OH minus, divided by the concentration of the base to start with. And water is a liquid here, and so it does not show up in the equilibrium expression. So that's the expression for Kb. Just like with weak acids, the pH is going to depend on not only what the concentration of the base is, but on the extent of ionization as well. So this question is saying Kb for ammonia, a weak base, is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. What's the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of ammonia? Let's get to a bigger workspace and solve this problem. So we have ammonia, NH3. We know it's a weak base. And so that's going to mean it reacts with water and reversibly produces OH minus ions, aqueous solution, and then there's going to be the conjugate acid, which is NH4 plus in aqueous solution. And we know in this situation that Kb is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, and our job is to figure out what is the pH. Well, to find the pH, we need to find either the H plus concentration or pOH. We have two ways that we can get to pH. And I think a rice chart will help us. Uh, our initial concentrations are, well, for ammonia, it's 0 0.100. And we know that there's no OH minus and there's no conjugate acid before dissociation takes place. Now, the concentration of water, we don't really care what it is. In fact, it's ridiculously high compared with the rest of the numbers here. But it's not in our equilibrium expression, so we don't really care. The change, the stoichiometry is 1 to 1 here, so minus x, minus x on the reactant side, plus x, and plus x on the product side. So at equilibrium, ammonia concentration is going to be 0 0.100 minus x, water we still don't care about, and OH minus and NH4 are going to be x's as well. So. In terms of our chart, Kb is going to be concentration of OH minus, which is x, times concentration of NH4 plus, which is also x, so x squared in the numerator, divided by 0 0.100 minus x. Now, 1.8 times 10 to minus 5 is a pretty small number, and that's what our Kb value is. 
So I'm going to assume that 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 is approximately equal to x squared divided by 0 0.100 and just leave off the x because I'm imagining that x is going to be pretty small compared with 0 0.100. Now if I multiply both sides by 0 0.100, here's what I get. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 times 0 0.100 is equal to x squared. Well, to solve for x, of course, I want to take the square root of both sides. So that means that x is equal to, if I do my multiplication and then take the square root, 0 0.0019. And that's equal to the concentration of OH minus. So one pathway to finding the pH is to take the pOH. The pOH is going to be negative base 10 logarithm of 0 0.0019 and that is equal to 2.89 and then from there I can find pH by taking 14.00 and subtracting 2.89 and that leaves me with a pH of 11.17 and this is a weak base and so it makes sense that that number would end up being higher than 7. Now one thing we need to do is go back and justify that it was okay to make our assumption that x was small enough to ignore compared with 0 0.100. And so let's do that. x ended up being 0 0.0019. If we take 0 0.100 and subtract 0 0.0019, we're going to find that we're rounding off to the to a digit that isn't really going to matter here. So it probably is okay. The rule that we typically use is is the number x 5% of what we started with? So we'll take 0 0.0019 and divide by 0 0.100. And of course, that turns out to be 1.9%, which is much less than 5%. So we're OK with our justification. And 11.17 is the correct pH. One last topic to talk about, and that is how are Ka and Kb related? In this chart, I have three acids with their conjugate bases. So I have hydrofluoric acid, acetic acid, and ammonium. And then the conjugate bases are, in turn, fluoride ion, acetate ion, and ammonia. Now, if you look at the Ka and the Kb, looking only at the orders of magnitude, you see negative 4 and negative 11. So that's about, when you add them up, minus 15. For the second acid, you have negative 5 and negative 10. So again, minus 15. And for the third acid base combination, you have minus 10, minus 5, again, minus 15. So in all cases, when you add up the exponents, you end up with negative 15. Now, if you were a little more precise and took account of the mantissas as well, you would find that when you multiply 6.9 times 10 to the minus 4, for example, by 1.4 times 10 to the minus 11, you end up with 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 and you'll get that here, and here, and here. So the relationship between Ka and Kb is that they appear to multiply together to give you 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Let's see if we can prove that that's true. Let's consider the acid, Hb, dissociating to give you H pluses and B minuses. Ka for this acid is the Kc for the reaction. Now let's add to that the reaction for the base, which would be B minus plus water in equilibrium with OH minus plus the conjugate acid HB. For this reaction, K is Kb. Now if we sum these together, here's what we get. HB drops out, B minus drops out, and we get this, H2O is in dynamic equilibrium with H plus plus OH minus. Now we already know that KW is the equilibrium constant for that reaction. And by the rule of multiple equilibria, that means Ka times Kb should give me KW. So we can make this general rule. For a conjugate acid base pair, Ka times Kb is equal to Kw. That could come in handy from time to time.
you need to find KA and all you know is KB, you can find it, and vice versa with KA, finding KB. Well, this should qualify you to solve some basic problems that have to do with acid-base chemistry. Next time, we're going to talk about the characteristics of salts that we don't think of as being acid and base, but in fact, they can be acidic or basic. And we're also going to look at how do we deal with polyprotic acids, acids that give up more than one proton when they ionize.